Obi, what's up, man? Hi. Can you see my? Oh wait, my video is off. Yeah, I gotta. Like, can you see my screen? My is my video on or? No, I can't see your video. I can see Christians though. Now I can see. Wait. No, I'm like stopping it and stopping the, turning on and it's not. Oh, I know why. I was using my camera on my. Uh, I was trying to. Okay, it should. Austin, you make me want to go put on a blazer yeah, or something. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I will turn. I will take this off. But I, but uh, I wasn't sure how formal we were gonna be. It's also cold. I'm like, I can go get a blazer. You know, I've been waiting to stun I on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me see. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take it off for this, not to be overly formal. There we go. Yeah, I was, I was, I figured I was. I just got back. Oh, wait. oh, well, I'll put it back on. You'll keep oh, it on. Okay. Oh, okay. I gotta go put on, give my blazer. Hold on. Yeah, one sec. All right. I didn't know that that was the. I didn't know I was... either. So I, didn't, I, I mean, I usually, I usually wear a jacket for these things, but I, wasn't I didn't know what the plan was. I have my pocket square. It was ready. <laughs> I, I came on and I saw that, and I was like, "Oh, this." I don't know if I want to button it up. Uh, whatever. This works. Okay. <laughs> I like your background. It's really nice. Thanks, man. I just chopped up the uh, the graphic. Did this on yeah. PowerPoint. <laughs> I wish I had that. Um, I should have done that. Matter of fact, I can send it to you really quick. Right, since we got some time. All right, I feel more comfortable. <laughs> I'm gonna actually send it to everybody in case. Um, so this is what I was going over yesterday and I wanted to ask here. I know the speakers at the bottom, it's written there, but I wasn't sure if there are additional things you would like me to add to your introduction speaker bio because um, Christian, I see it's, it's Christian Jones, co-founder of Patty Gray Smith Fellowship. What else would you like me to like introduce you to? Uh, right now I'm a student. So yeah, that's fine. I'm the aerospace engineering student, Wichita State University, and that's perfect. Uh, okay. Obi, for mine, honestly, keep it keep it one line. Uh, you can literally okay. just say director of marketing communications oversees or leads all kind of you know marketing efforts at Redwire. Super, uh, and then you just mentioned that I'm executive mentor now for uh, yeah. Zed. That's it. I was just gonna say Austin Jordan, director of marketing of marketing and communications. Um, Redwire and also uh, Z Factor Fellowship Executive Mentor. Perfect. But if you want, I'll put overseas and leads all. Nah, we don't have to get all that. The way you said it was perfect. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> because that's what I had, and I wasn't sure yeah. if I was going. I, definitely nothing I would have written would do um, you enough justice, both nah, you, Christine, and everyone else. But um, just waiting on Dr. John. So, uh, Mariba. Are you gonna call? Uh, does he want to? Be, does he want us to call him Doctor Jock? Because no, he doesn't. I just, I'm just okay. So I do the same thing with uh, Tanya a lot. Yeah, I'll say Mariba, but I, I do that. Um, it, it, I do it with my uncles too. It's really, I, I always see it, and in my head, I'm like, oh, we have a PhD, and then I say it. It's not really meant. To, I, I, it, I have to trip myself to stop that, but I do it a lot because it's, it's more out of like, well, I really respect that. thing, right? Yeah. Okay, um, see if I can, but. Yeah, 
problem is I don't think I have the cool version of uh, Zoom to do a background. What? Yeah, I don't know why my school doesn't. Oh, I can't do a background. That's yeah. right. What? Ooh, I'm not logged in here. So uh, they yeah. play us like cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Big Mac, all to, you know, all beef patty, special sauce, please, lettuce, please, lettuce, please, lettuce, please, lettuce, bun. Please find a way to weave that into the to the cover. <laughs> <laughs> so um just pre final stuff, I guess. Um basically just going through the outline there. Uh, I was waiting on Mariba, but I do welcome the remarks. Uh, basically, I just welcome the audience and uh, talk about um, the exact description that we have there. Um, Redwire and Zed Factor Fellowship have partnered together to launch a compelling speaker. All of that there, I'll just say that. And then that's the remark. And then I'll just talk about the panelists. And that should be in five minutes. And then I'll just say, hey, let's get right into it. Yeah. Um, I see that Brooke Owens stuff coming up, Christian. I can't figure out the background. It's just not. Yeah, I can't figure mine out. It was there for a second, but then like. Yeah, it, was. Was. it looks it like the lighting makes it. Uh, it's, it's, if I close the window, then my face, my melanin's not going to show up. So yeah, I just figure I'm going to just keep it. Uh, that's cool. And then I'll okay, go through. I just made you a co-host, by the way, so that you should. Oh, yeah, thank have, you. Yeah. The pre panel is live. Oh, are there people here? I guess. Oh, you know what? Kojo, it must be because we don't actually have a, uh, like, a, we don't have a wait, a lobby. So, yeah, it is live technically because there's no, there's no, uh, lobby. right now, Kojo is the only one in, uh, in the attendee list, but yeah. yeah, I guess we'll be mindful of what we say. So, um, I'll go through. I don't know. I, I had, talked about it earlier about just going through the chat. Um, I really wanted to focus on things that people are interested in, but uh, for the topics I plan on asking every, I'll just ask, uh, I'll ask the, the, so I'll ask one person and then the next topic goes to the next person and that's it. And when, after someone speaks, please give them enough time to speak and then just feel free to hop on. I don't know how many people will join this. Uh, I think it'll be interesting amount. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, yeah. I, is this are we recording? It's recording, right? Yes, yeah. so that's there. Um, really excited for this. Um, given how we already discussed on over the weekend, the pre panel was like, the, I guess, the pre pre panel was enlightening, and uh, that positivity there was, was great. And I would like to just keep that same energy. Um, yeah. well, I don't have water, so yeah, that's that's all I had. Um, really just introduction and uh, session outline. I'll just do the opening remarks again. And then I just ask questions, it's five questions, uh, but I plan on just, uh, you know, the first one because Redwire comms is to my uh, right, the way I'm looking at it here. So I ask Austin, in the, it says Redwire comms. There, I know, so. I, should, I should have updated mine, sorry. <laughs> but I'll, I'll ask you first and then, uh, then Christian and then, uh, Moriba and uh, esteemed George will be going through the um, audience questions. Will just be documenting that. Hey George, can you open up a a document for us so that we can like kind of so I can track the questions. So that way, like on the side, I can look at it. So that at the end, I can just take some of the audience questions. Uh, what I was gonna do is like maybe those one. It seemed like a lot of work to be on a panel also and then say, hey, these are the questions that George is tracking. But maybe if they come up and you're interested in one, you could highlight it and say, hey, I want to talk about this. And near the end, I'll just be like yeah. some audience questions. Okay. Or I could just ask them and then see if anyone wants to take them. Yeah, that sounds good. So, okay. Um, Margo, where, where, I, where do I get one of those, those shirts? Which ones? I need one of those Afro shirts. Yeah, so, so, so interestingly. Oh, hey. Yeah. I didn't see you in here. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. So um, no, there, there's uh, the 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 person who uh, put this stuff together. I guess he saw me on Instagram, and he's like, "I think you should wear one of my shirts." I'm like, "You need to tell me more about that." So uh, yeah, I can I can I can send you the link uh, to where you can find this stuff, man. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Doctor Jaw, I must say. 
I'm a little offended by the UT stuff. I know you're UT. It's all UT. I'm an OU fan. So I'm like huge OU fan, football. Can I tell like you something? Texas. So, so here, here's, what, here, you don't like it? No. So here's what I'm going to tell you. In no way, shape, or form would I even possibly even remotely in a million gazillion years want to do that. So how's this? <laughs> Is that better? much better? <laughs> I'll say yes. <laughs> I'll say yes. That's much better. Okay. Feel, feel fantastic. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I go to WSU, but whenever we play OU, I sit on the OU side with my Wichita State stuff. <laughs> I understand. So here. Here's the thing. Anything that I do that brings out antibodies, I like to just change things up. So it's all good. <laughs> all good. No, you really okay. If you, I was just messing with you. If you really want to have it, have it on by all means. It was just, I'm just kidding. All with right, you. all right. <laughs> no worries. I, I, you know, it's like uh, the only reason I put that up as the background is because uh, for sure, UT. Uh, really needs to increase its diversity and that sort of stuff and um anyway it was just a messaging thing but but like i said i don't i don't want to get in, a, in into the football thing or whatever so the sports <laughs> thing so i'm good i'm good either way <laughs> but i agree my um my really good brookie sister, she is. Uh, she just graduated from UT last year, and now she's at Benchmark Aerospace. She was in the aerospace program. Do you know Michaela Dunn? Yeah. She goes by Nick. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, that's that's she, my best. She was right she there. she she was in one of my classes. Good, 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 good. Yep. She's awesome. Yep. <laughs> I even met her mother once. I still need to meet her mom, but she, we've been trying to coordinate that since we were in the same rookie class and that was two years ago. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Everybody doing all right, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Doing good. Excited to do Excited for this. Sorry, I've been here. I just uh, went to get water real quick. Uh, I was wondering what happened. I was like, where's Gojo? No, no, I went to get water and uh, also went in on Gojo. So on that same document I had, I think it will be just tracking the questions at the bottom. Um, I think I reshared it, but it's fine. So uh, that way we'll have documentation as we're going through. If we have a lot of questions, then we can update them. Uh, I see Sarah is already in here. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's all great faces on this panel. And uh, as always, I have like, really interesting stage fright that only happens like when I'm about to speak. So I'm glad right. I'm just moderating. So right like, before, right? And then it just kind yeah. of subsides. Yeah, it's not there, but this walk, well, this morning I woke up at 3.30 a.m. So that's the kind of, yeah, and I had a dream about the panel. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, wow, okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna get some water real quick, but, but no interesting that about the dream. Oh, by the way, I put the link to, uh, yeah. to the afro stuff there in, in the chat cool oh that's nice i like the hoodie definitely i'm getting that yeah some folks starting to tune in oh people are coming in yeah we're live so I'm, i don't know if you have a okay. magic number of it but it'll one more of uh, my magic number was uh <laughs> on the dot <laughs> You're like 3 p.m. Eastern Sharp. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just there, Eastern Sharp. I see Patrick, I see a lot of it. Hey, Simon. Uh, welcome everyone. Oh wait, just one more, one more minute. And 
think I'll wait for uh, Moriba to come back and then I will um, start. Okay. Uh, I think it's like 10, 10 more seconds. Yeah. I'm Hang actually up. counting down. <laughs> okay, it's 12 here, my time. So, uh, yeah, welcome everyone uh, to this uh, awesome panel. Uh, Redwire and Z Factor Fellowship have partnered together to launch a compelling speaker series, uh, Equitable Space, focused on facilitating critical conversations and elevating important topics centered on diversity and inclusion to educate and empower professionals within the aerospace industry. So, um, February 25th. So in celebration of African American History Month, join us for an engaging conversation featuring a panel of distinguished black aerospace professionals uh, that will share their experiences and discuss the importance of diversity, allyship, and key issues that are impacting professionals in the black community or black industry, uh, in the industry, sorry. Yeah, there was a lot to like speak up, but I wanted to make sure I delivered that clearly because I'm really excited for this. So sorry that I was reading out everything. <laughs> the rest of this is uh, pretty straightforward and easy. So um, yeah, I'm joined with, uh, I'm, well, I'm OB. I'm just project engineer at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works and I'm a Z Factor Fellowship uh, founding partner. Um, I'm joined with, uh, I guess to my right on the screen is uh, Austin Jordan, he's Director of Marketing and Communications, Redwire and Z Factor Fellowship Executive Mentor. Um, also, uh, next to that is Christine Jones, uh, co-founder of the Patty Gray Smith Fellowship and an aerospace engineering student at Wichita State University. And then Dr. Mary Baja, Associate Professor of Aerospace Engineering and, and Engineering Mechanics at the University of Texas at Austin and a Z Factor Fellowship Executive Mentor. So um, just to get right into it, because uh, we have, that was a lot of, everybody's amazing and there's a lot of stuff to speak to. So um, I'll just start with Austin since it's to my right. Uh, I was wondering uh, to you, um, what's the importance of black representation within the aerospace industry um, historically and present day? and uh, how has that impacted you personally and uh, industry-wide? Yeah, yeah, I'll take that. And first off, thanks, Obi, for moderating. And I'm looking forward. Thanks to the other panels for being here. And thanks to the folks that are tuning in um, for taking time out of your day to come hang out with us and, and be a part of this engaging conversation. I'm really excited to talk with y'all today and kind of be a part of this. Um, uh, but getting back to your question, Obi, uh, Black representation within the industry, especially within aerospace, is, is critically important. Um, I know for me personally, uh, working within aerospace wasn't a dream. Um, it wasn't something that I thought uh, was necessarily a career path for me. Um, I think maybe partly due to not seeing uh, myself in those spaces. Um, and so I think representation uh is, is critically important, especially uh, as we look to create more equitable spaces within the industry, as we look to kind of diversify kind of the workforce. Um, even just the folks that are represented here, um, all of us kind of come from different communities, uh, different backgrounds, different experiences, uh, but we are all each a living testament to the fact that um, someone that looks like us can work in aerospace and whether you're an engineer or you're a communicator um, or whatever your career path is, you know, there's a lane for you within our industry. Um, and so historically speaking, I think you, you look at this lens where uh, um, the black community, the black and brown community uh, or people of color not always having the same levels of access. Um, and sometimes I think that impacting, uh, you know, generations that came after them looking at pursuing careers in STEM um, and specifically in aerospace. And so the more that we can elevate uh, conversations like this, elevate folks that are working and doing the work, I think it's important. Um, and, and the more we promote the visibility of the folks that are really doing the work, uh, and representing under represented communities, it's, it's it's important. I think every every touch point matters. Um, I will stop there because I kind of want some of the other folks to chime in on that question and maybe get some crosstalk going. Um, but overall, I think it's it's critically important to where we are now. And I 
uh, I can guarantee you that there are folks that are watching us and watching what we're doing kind of in this dispensation um, that are that are, are choosing or picking career paths based off of, you know, who they see in the space. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so for me personally, I think that that's important because um, right now I'm joined on this panel with you and uh, Dr. Shaw and uh, Christine Jones and, um, you know, it's executive director at uh, uh, Redwire, a communications director at Redwire and uh, an esteemed professor and a student that just landed like a great job in aerospace. It really shows me the possibility to exit for even myself in this industry. So I'll go on to uh, Christine, if you have an answer for that, uh, the importance of black representation within the aerospace industry and how that has impacted you personally in the industry. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, multi-layered uh, for me. I grew up wanting to be an astronaut. I was just like, okay, mom and dad, this is it. Uh, I want to be an astronaut. And I had no clue of what that even looked like to get there. Um, and even, you know, seeing, I didn't even know who Mae Jemison was until I was probably in eighth grade, you know, freshman year, um, because I grew up, you know, K through 12 in predominantly white institutions. And so that wasn't in our history. That wasn't something that we were taught. And so for me, it felt like I was the only one for a really long time. But um, I think I just, felt as if, you know, there, there isn't anyone that looks like me, but that's not going to deter me um, from achieving those goals and getting to those places. Um, but as far as representation for as soon as, you know, hidden figures came out and all of a sudden it's this, this big blow up of, oh my gosh, there are people who look like me and that are out there and made a big impact and they've always been there. And so it was just really inspiring um, to see that for the next generation of, you know, there are people that look like you that are very successful and that are in places that we didn't even dream of, you know, as little kids. Um, and to me, it was such an impact because being a part of that transition of, you know, being a teenager when Hidden Figures came out and seeing that, you know, I'm a part of that new wave of saying, hey, you know, we are, there are people like us that are out there. And it just motivated me that, you know, if, you know, there's one person in the, you know, in the whole company, one black woman in the whole company, I should definitely be able to survive with being the only black woman on my team or in my classes. And so it just really motivated me. Um, to keep going and to continue to, you know, make the door wider and wider for more Black students. Thank you. And I guess um, more of us since you're the last one there, but definitely also interested in what you have to say. Yeah, I mean, look, when I, um, when I went through my own kind of, uh, you know, education in aerospace engineering, I, I, I didn't think that this was necessarily meant for me. You know, one of the things that I remember from my time as uh, an enlisted person in the Air Force uh, was somebody said, you know, don't let anybody's opinion become your reality kind of thing. And, uh, you know, my story for, you know, tracking stuff in space started as me being a cop at a nuclear missile base in Montana, uh, which I had no idea where Montana was until I got sent there kind of thing. And uh, really dark skies looking at the sky, seeing dots of light going across, wondering what that was, and, and come to find out these things were, were, were stuff that you know humans had put in this space. And I became, I was just intellectually curious. I'm like, you know what? I want to know more about that. And many people said no. Not many people looked like me along the way. That made things uh, challenging, to say the least. But um, you know, one of the things that, that, that I do appreciate uh, is that there were just a few folks, um, you know, through the trajectory that at least believed in me. And, 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 and so that was, um, I think that was a needed thing. And I, um, I'm sure we're going to get to this uh, later on, but I, I used anger to get through a lot of this stuff when I didn't have to. And uh, I've, 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 I've learned as a consequence of that. But maybe we'll get into that a little bit later on. 
definitely, definitely writing that down. So we will get into that later on. Uh, I'll be asking private questions too about that when we get more. Actually, um, so I know a lot of it was about representation where we are and um, like what that um, seeing people like you there or people that empower you. And I, um, I'll start with Christian with this because um, the question is more targeted to some of the work you're doing right now. And it says, uh, you know, how can we effectively build community for Black, Indigenous, and people of color within um, within the industry? I know for me, as my time as a student, I was happy for NET because National Society of Black Engineers is really phenomenal. And uh, there's Bay Awards that you see success uh, highlighted. And uh, and right now, what you're working on, uh, Hank Grace Smith Fellowship, you just announced your, uh, I believe, your fellows. So if you'd like to, like, what does that look like? How could we effectively build a community for Black um, people of color in the industry? Yeah, definitely. So I think as far as building a community, um, for one, it's, I know it's a stigma sometimes in, in the community that, you know, you have to kind of step on each other to get ahead and you know, it's it's only one, it can only be one. So I wanna be the one and that's not the mentality that we need to have. It's, you know, helping each other up and it's totally okay. Um, and if I, I'd be quite candid, I'm a candid person, but it's kind of society tells us, you know, if you help, if you promote, if you uh, endorse someone that looks like you, if you're a person of color that you're in the wrong, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, and being able to bring diverse talent to the table um, and that's number one, being able to help each other up and continue to create the community because it can't be a community by yourself, um, as well as uh, acknowledging the fact that we're all different. Um, we all bring different things to the table like this panel right now. It's four of us, but we all come from different backgrounds and have had different experiences of how we got to today um, to being on this panel together. And that really means a lot. Um, and we can support each other in that way. And so I think the biggest thing is also understanding with that we're diverse within a diverse group, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and I know it seems like in BIPOC and there's all these labels, you know, to put people in boxes, people of color, now it's black people. Now it's like this, you have to be a blanket statement, if that makes sense. But there, there are so many different experiences and, and opportunities that we can all gain um, from just saying, you know, hey, yes, we all have the same skin color or we're all from the same ethnic background or, or we're race, but we're, we're all different. And so using those things to almost bring us closer together um, and allowing those spaces to prosper in the workplace um, and being okay with that and sharing these types of moments um, where we can talk about our experiences and it not be a soapbox of, oh, poor me, but these are the great things that I'm doing and this is how I overcame. Um, so that's kind of my, my spiel. <laughs> uh, does anyone want to add more to that, Austin? Yeah, uh, I can jump in. Okay. Um, I, I think when it comes to building community in aerospace, I think there has to be a recognition um, an acute recognition that a that we lack diversity but it has to be a priority that we take to actually build community by opening the doors and really kicking down the doors and really making it an urgent thing that within our community that we're looking to diversify you know whether it's people of color underrepresented communities but it's a thing where it's not enough for us to say hey aerospace isn't very diverse we realize that kind of check the box and move on and kind of this kind of rolling conversation where we recognize it but an urgency where we're we're, we're looking not to just say you know this is how it is how it's always been there's a few folks that have been able to kind of from underrepresented communities that have been able to access this space and they're kind of the shining stars. They've been, look at what they've been able to do in the face of like, you know, adversity or lack of access, you know, look at them. I, I think it, it shouldn't be a thing where we continue this conversation of like, this is the way it's been. Like, let's continue to like celebrate the folks that have pioneered and pushed through. Uh, there should be a sense of urgency that in order for us to start to build community, it means that we have to hire folks that look different than the norm, than the status quo. We have to make sure that we're like, promoting diversity within our hiring, within our promotion, within our recruiting. Um, and to me, that's how you build community. You talk about Nesby. Um, 
National Society of Black Engineers, you built community around people that had similar experiences that looked like you. There was a, there was, there was, there was resources within that. And, and, and Nesby was, a, was an access point for you. And I think aerospace collectively has to see that, has to see and recognize that, but then mobilize both resources and, and a sense of urgency behind that. You know, it's interesting in the context, like societal context, this past summer with the murder of George Floyd, there was a lot of people that like wrote op-eds. There was a lot of people I read like in the industry um, that had, thing, had things to say that felt visceral about, have visceral reaction to what they were witnessing. Um, and I think it was one of the first times working in this industry that I felt like seen because I felt like colleagues of mine that were a different color or different race than me or different background than me, witnessing something like that that created such a visceral reaction across the country i think for the first time like realize outside of a professional capacity like what it actually might look like for someone from a different community and it was i remember getting texts on my phone i remember colleagues getting texts on their phone and i think like that's the type of urgency i'm talking about is where you see someone and you realize that hey you know there is a lack of equity there is a lack of equality there is a lack of diversity but then you mobilize resources behind it and that I think we have to first see the fact that and look in the mirror as an industry and collectively say like this, this isn't sustainable, this isn't right. We, we need folks that don't look like the norm. We don't, we need more engineers, we need more scientists, we need more, you know, we need more people in positions of power that aren't just the traditional, you know, white male, you know, status quo. And I, and I think that our industry particularly sometimes has this aspiration of like we want to be diverse we want to do that but actually doesn't necessarily always cast that check you know with with how we're supposed to mobilize resources um, and even supporting the folks that are doing the grassroots work to make sure that we can kick down that door open and can we can flood our, our workforce and our pipelines with a more diverse pool of, of, of folks and so um, yeah, I, I feel strongly about that in the sense that I think that we've got to recognize and, and we have to see that, not only just see that, but we have to be committed to, to making sure that we are pushing forward uh, meaningful actions to change it. So um, just there's some things there, there's some uh, the same sentences being said here that I'm trying to tie in together. Um, so one of the things you mentioned is like kicking down the door or like being able to like bring more representation in there. and a lot of this too is saying we as an industry or like you know hey we need to make more um reduce the barriers of entering in that form but like most of the attendees here might be students too and they're trying to get in there and you know you have a certain amount of time that you're doing your uh you're doing your undergrad or whatever you're having a certain time time and you're not just waiting for the industry to open those yeah. things for you so one of the things is how do you empower yourself i know um dr dry spoke on it and i'm linking it to that because i said we'll be right back and i want to understand like you know while you're there and you know that there's something you want to do in this industry you know you want to get there um and you spoke about using anger and that so how did you um how was that for you not seeing maybe there were all these barriers for your success in there. Like, how did you motivate yourself? What exactly, if you would like to expound on like, you know, the anger component, um, Marva. So that would be really helpful. Yeah, so, I mean, as an undergrad, um, from the get-go, my academic advisor at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in, in, in Arizona, he um, advised me not to study aerospace engineering. He basically said, this isn't for you. You've been out of high school for a while. You basically you went into the military as an enlisted person. You never took calculus. You're already at a disadvantage. You're 23 years old. You're starting now with these people coming out of high school. Like, there's no way you're going to be able to get through the program. That upset me, and that was so. So so I use I use some frustration in the whole. Uh, don't let anybody's opinion become your reality thing. And I strapped it on and I said, I'm going to try this anyway, even, even against uh, the advice of my academic advisor. Um, you know, throughout this, uh, I remember I wanted to, to do NASA, you know, a NASA research program under the Arizona Space Grant program. Um, but that, though, I'm going to date myself a little bit, but this was before emails were a thing. 
and I had to like actually write letters to folks. And uh, for whatever reason, I couldn't get into the NASA space grant program at, at Embry-Riddle and I wrote letters to NASA headquarters. And finally, uh, my department chair in aerospace pulled me to the side and I guess I flooded their, their mail system with, with that. And he's like, so here's the deal. I'm gonna let you in. Uh, I'm gonna let you in. I'm gonna let you into this program because you know, fr frankly, you know, you've, you've, you're, you're like mailing folks like all the time. You're not gonna get rich at this thing. For every two hours of work you do, I'm only gonna pay you for one. So I took it upon myself and that, 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 that made me a bit angrier, right? Um, but I used the anger to try to make myself better. And the thing that I, the thing that I realized quite quickly uh, was that in order for me to get the same thing as my counterparts, I needed to be two or three times better. And so the thing is, uh, I used the anger to try to drive myself to be like, not only am I going to know this stuff, but I'm going to know this stuff like this is going to be my life, my thing, my fabric. And unfortunately, where, where this became detrimental for me is that, um, you know, at conferences, like the, the anger actually got me into grad school because uh, I've never been a great test taker. Uh, I'm not a 4.0 student. I mean, I, I got B's and stuff like that but I, I, I wasn't like a straight A person. And my, my GREs to, for grad school uh, weren't that awesome. Um, I, I did not have a great GPA coming out because I subscribed to being part of every club possible in undergrad. So I suffered that kind of consequence that I've seen in other black students coming out. And it's like, yeah, my, 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 my non-black counterparts weren't doing all this stuff. I was in every club that you could possibly imagine spending every hour outside of class doing all these things and on top of that doing homework and trying to do this research stuff, right? So I remember going to a conference and presenting my work from the NASA stuff that I finally got into. And um, not only did I do a good job presenting it, but the other people that were presenting, anything that I found as a mistake in what they presented, I basically I annihilated them publicly. This was like public annihilation. I wanted to show not only the person presenting, but everybody in that crowd that I could pick everybody apart. And this was part of the anger. It was part of my anger. It was like, I need to be better because or else nobody's gonna hear me. I need to scream louder. I need to be the person that uh, points out more flaws in other people's stuff. And it was like, I did that. And I got into, I basically, I impressed my, 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 my advisor from grad school. He's like, you know, never have I seen somebody take apart one of my PhD students. You're not even in grad school and you took apart one of my PhD students publicly. Like, I want you to be my grad student. But it's not a positive because the thing is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up here really quick. Somebody came to me at a conference and they asked me not to go to their presentation. They pulled me to the side and they said, Morba, dude, do me a favor. This is when I present. Please don't come to my to my session. And I'm like, why not? He's like, because I'm sure there's something that I didn't do. Not that I can think of it, but you're going to see it and you're going to humiliate me in front of everybody. And I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to ask you, don't show up to my session. And it made me reflect. It's like, this is not who I want to be. I allowed myself to go to this and uh, I didn't require anger to be able to be excellent. And so it took that sort of experience to start to scale back from being this like, uh, you, know, ex you know, public executioner. Um, I didn't need to be that person, so. Obi, if I may just chime in really quick. Um, please, please. Dr. Jaw, that really jogged something in, in me as far as the the anger that you said you had because as a and I, it's and I started I'm sorry to pick out stereotypes but as a black woman like you're number one if you show any sign of anger or frustration or anything like that it becomes very intimidating um and something that I noticed on the other side of that is 
I would never get angry. I would never show any sign of, of irritation or anything of, of that nature. And it took, you know, me saying, you know what? It's okay to get upset. It's okay. It's, it's saying these are my boundaries and you don't get to cross my boundaries just because you're a white counterpart or, or you're a white boss or a white professor. Um, and so when I finally took the time to say that's okay and give myself the, the ability to have those feelings, it was a lot more respect that I got of, wow, you know, you're, you're standing up for not only what you believe in, but standing up for other people because this is the status quo of just, we're not supposed to say anything. Um, and that kind of goes back to representation, right? And it's not all the time you have to be the angry black woman. Like I'm not coming in the industry to be the angry black woman, but at the same time, there's a respect. I deserve respect and I deserve to be heard, right? Um, and so that was a big thing for me. So sorry, Obi, I kind of sidetracked, but I wanted to make sure if there's anybody in the audience that feels that way, um, that you're not alone. <laughs> Obi, I'm gonna like step over for a second. Can I have a question specifically for Christian and, and more of a, one of the things I feel like we've kind of touched on here is this kind of this concept of like black excellence, especially, you know, sometimes when you are maybe the only black person in your department or your, or your program or, or one of the few kind of minority uh, minorities represented and this idea of having to be two, three times better uh, than your colleagues or your counterparts uh, and, and, and how you channel that personally and how you deal with kind of like that burden, mental burden of thinking that. Um, I'm sure there's maybe folks walk, watching or, or kind of participating today. Uh, how do you handle that how do you navigate that what are, what are what are some things where you're where you, even in your individual journey because you are the only one and sometimes you have to in order to survive in this in certain spaces where you have to bite your tongue or you deal with the microaggressions or you realize that hey i'm the only black person on the floor and so like i can't react how i would want to react because i need my job or I, I need to stay in this class or i need to pass you know and so there's a burden that comes with that i think that is also part of when you when you don't have diversity in these spaces right it becomes an outlier we're like okay Christian represents what a black woman is in this space. There's not more black women that have similar spaces in her community that are making sure that that space that she exists in and operates in is equitable, where she can say something, she can react a certain way and it doesn't feel like I'm an outlier. More of the same way as you were kind of going through, like you were fueled by anger and the dealing with the microaggressions, even at, in undergrad. And so how, you know, for students or folks that might be like saying like, hey, I'm trying to navigate a career space. Hey, I'm trying to kind of get ahead. And I've sometimes, struggle with the burden of my own individual identity as a black or brown person or someone from an underrepresented community in this predominant, in a space that doesn't look like me. Um, there's a mental fatigue there. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fatigue there even in trying to be good, be great at what you're doing um, because sometimes there's lack of community there. So how do you navigate that space? Or is there any feedback or encouragement you would give for folks that are struggling with that? Well, so, so the thing that I wanna say to that is this. Um, I have not yet mastered this. Um, I am the first black professor in aerospace engineering and engineering mechanics at the University of Texas at Austin. Um, I can tell you that all things being equal, it should be a no brainer to hire diversity, but that's not really what happens. And um, I, so I, I went up for tenure, uh, uh, you know, just the year before last. And they hired me as an associate professor without tenure. Uh, I won't get into my feelings about that, but I said, okay, they want to test me to make sure that, that I'm worthy of, of being faculty here, right? And I got two years, I got two years to make tenure. And um, in those two years, and my family paid a price uh, as a consequence, um, I wanted to make sure that there was no there was like tenure was not given to me. I earned it. The numbers that I put up in terms of the money that I brought in, the papers I published, uh, the letters, external letters that I got, uh, all this stuff, I'm just going to be very frank. I did probably 
three times as better than anybody historically did going up for tenure in the department to make sure that it was, there was no question and that there was, it, it had to be unanimous. It's like this person, if we don't give this person tenure, there's no, the, the body of evidence is so ridiculous that, right? I, I felt I needed to be in that position and that's what I did. And the thing is with everything I do, that's what, that's, that's what I put out there. And in fact, just yesterday, just yesterday, somebody watched my video uh, that Verge Science did of, of my research. And this person decided, you know what? They're gonna contact me and say, look, um, those earrings that you got from your auntie and the piercings that you have and these tattoos, they just, they just get in the way of your, your, of your message, man. Like you should just be wearing a suit and tie and just like fall in line. Cause, cause basically, you know, you have a shamanic necklace on and he was just very insulting. And, and it's like, yep, this still happens today. And the thing is, I'm pretty much unapologetic. It's like people will know me for my work. And if they see some ink and some piercings, it's like, my work is excellent and I'm gonna just let that speak. And I need to have my individuality be part of this and the stuff that I wear and how I do it, it's cultural. And the data clearly show uh, that when we have a solution that comes as a consequence of a fusion of ideas uh, from diverse backgrounds that it's always better in the long term. That was a lot of enlightening discussion there. Uh, just segueing off that, because uh, something I wanted to highlight that I want to address too is um, there's a lot of anger there as motivation. Like I know you said, you said, hey, that was not necessarily the right thing to do, but it got you to where I wanted to go. And I know for me, uh, uh, Dean actually told me I would never be an engineer. So I'm at my dream job and I think it's pretty swell. Um, but trying to trying to trying to outline that though it's like those those because when that happened it also became like a source of I was really angry and really inspired from that and I'm uh, there are lots of things I would do differently now and so for all the students here that are listening to um, what I want to capture for you uh, more of a is you know you have cool earrings you have cool uh, even your shirt's cool uh, <laughs> and nice tattoos so I mean you have a Wikipedia page that's just awesome stuff for anyone there is just listening here is cool Wikipedia, just coolness. So how do we keep that that coolness there? And you know, like go for accessibility for black youth there and say, okay, you get in, but without focusing on that anger, like what other methods can you be motivated there and see how like so, yeah, so so here's here's the I think the the ticket is to be courageous. And and the way that I define courage is courage is the absence of paralysis in the presence of fear. And the thing is, I wanna let everybody know, I suffer a lot from anxiety. I've had panic attacks. It's like, my life has been pretty complicated. There've been times in my life that I've like eaten out of a dumpster because I didn't have enough uh, money for food. I'm afraid of ha having to experience that again, right? So part of me is motivated to not be in that position ever again in my life kind of thing. Um, but I don't let the fear stop me from moving forward. And so the thing that I would just tell people is, look, be courageous, meaning it's okay to be afraid, let the fear move through you, but don't sacrifice your personality for, for, for excellence. And the thing is, it may not seem like uh, there are certain places that would be embracing of that, but at the end of the day, you don't want to work at a place that won't because then the anger becomes resentment, right? Because then you are, you are uh, slowing yourself down. You're making yourself, you're making yourself small for people on purpose. And eventually that will eat you up alive. You, that is not sustainable. So the thing is the best thing that you got to do is be yourself and, and let your excellence shine uh, in whichever way it needs to come out and the right place for you will become manifest. Just have faith in that, have the courage to, to embrace that vision. And uh, just before I let Austin know, so Christine, I, 
I think you might have things to input to that. It looks, you look anticipatory, but uh, for the audience, for the, for the audience uh, not to mention, if you have questions, uh, please, uh, for later, please just type them in the chat and uh, steamed uh, Kojo should be taking them down from now. And then in the last few minutes of the panel, we'll just, uh, we'll go through some questions you may have asked. And uh, so for Christian, do you have a follow-up to that or? <laughs> I just put you on the uh, spot. No, it's okay. Um, as far as, you know, being who you are, people, I always sometimes, uh, I think it comes back to the imposter syndrome thing of, you know, am I good enough? Do I have, how do I fit? How do I fit myself in? And and it took, you know, some really wise people to say like, why are you putting all your energy and trying to fit in? It's not about fitting in, it's standing out and being who you are. And for me, I kind of take a different perspective being, you know, female, a black female. And I love glitz and glamor and sparkles. I always tell people like my dream job is to be like a princess, astronaut, scientist, engineer, all in one, um, because I'm very glitzy. But, you know, sometimes there's a idea of if you're too girly or, or too feminine that you're not smart enough. You know, I've been in spaces where, you know, I show up with, with my makeup on and my nails done and, and I engage in a conversation um, and I'm not listened to until I demand the space, right? Um, and, and making myself smaller that it was kind of like, okay, now I'm trying to blend in and, and realizing that, no, it's, I'm brought in and I'm at this table for a reason and I'm not just gonna be at this table to sit, I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna embellish in the bread and the butter and the pasta and the wine that's at the table. Um, and I want, you know, my fellow counterparts to feel, you know, like they can do that as well. Um, and, and I mean, I, you all semi know me, Obi, you know me really well, um, my big personality. Uh, and so I feel like it's a, it's a blessing and, a, and it's an add, it's a bonus uh, to whatever space that I'm in to just bring myself, bring all that I am um, into that. So I hope that <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting hyped listening to Christian. She's like the bread, the wine, the wine. She's like, I'm getting <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I agree. I agree 100 percent with more what more of a said what Christian said. I, I I think like like panels like this are so refreshing and encouraging because it, it reminds folks like there there is space for you, you know, in 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 whatever lane you're in, there is absolutely space for you. And you should fully maximize and occupy the space that you create. Like that is your space. Whatever you bring to your job, whatever you bring to your career pursuit, doesn't matter if 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 it has never been done before, if they don't do it the way that you do it, they don't dress the way you dress, they don't speak the way you speak. Um, um, I know that there's, also, especially with, you know, minority students, sometimes there's this, this sense of like, you know, like Christian, Christian said, this imposter syndrome where I'm not competitive enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not as good as, I didn't go to the schools that they went to, I don't have the background that they have, I don't have access to the resources that they do, um, but with what you're pursuing in the space that you're inhabiting, like that is your space, like own your space, embrace your space, love your space, love who you are, and, 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 and know that there is room for you in the gifts and the talents that you bring, there is absolutely room for you. Um, and I believe that strongly. And I think that's probably when, when we have discussions, or I know a lot of us are connected to kind of mentorships and, and, we, and we go talk and we go kind of encourage students at, at all grade levels, undergrad, K to 12. Um, a lot of times when I go talk, especially um, when I go give talks like to underrepresented uh, communities, like especially predominantly black and brown students at even like elementary or middle school, um, there's always this kind of like interesting dynamic where you ask kids like, what do you wanna be? And, you know, and there's like a variety of answers. And it's always so cool when I go and talk and, and there are kids that say, I wanna be an astronaut or I wanna be an engineer. Or, I wanna go be a scientist or I wanna go be an entomologist. You know, they're always like the one kid that tries to like impress everybody with like a, a word that he just learned. But like, that is awesome. And I think like, 
what what I would love to see is 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 for our industry to start to lean in to really start to celebrate the diversity of voices that represent so many different groups to continue to shine a light that there is space for this next generation that has big dreams that wants to see themselves uh, that aren't yet kind of mired in the thought that you can't be something that you can't do something that still have these wild audacious dreams and I think that um, you know life is kind of will beat you up in a certain way and. And, 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 and there are real challenges, um, there are real issues. And I think that I'm encouraged by colleagues that you know, are to the, the boxes around me, and even the folks watching that are really committed to lending their voice, lending their platforms, leaning in when they can, and, 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 and folks that look completely different than us, folks that are willing to kind of lean in and do the work. And I'm so encouraged by the generation, my generation, the generation, in front of me, even in the generation that's coming behind that has a brashness about po political issues, societal issues, you know, you know, energy issues, like a, a generation that's growing up informed and connected and wants to be world changers. And so that's, that's exciting for me. And I, I hope I can do whatever I can to kind of, you know, throw my weight behind that too. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, Y'all are really just putting it out here. Y'all are really inspiring. I'm just glad to sit here and listen to you. Um, I wanted to connect to the last question, just on well, that last, I have a couple more, but over the, after the last question, because a lot of the focus was on like um, imposter syndrome and tokenism and like being the only one there and still wanted to establish your place on the table. But um, I know for me, a lot of it has worked with, um, I have a best friend that's black like me and then we kind of navigated the same industry together and we found that. And for a lot of the students here that are listening too, I know that a lot of the thing is we do need, the industry has to like accept uh, us into the industry and have those avenues there. But also as a student, if you're looking at it, it's like, what do I do to connect with um, like, people that have the job that I want, like representation like me, like how do they, how do they find mentors that like, actually get them into the industry because a lot of times they end up being the first of their kind, right? Like that's, that's like um, Herbert just said, he's the first black professor there at UT Austin. That's an esteemed school. So when you see that, it's like, what can they do like to connect with folk or how do they empower themselves or how can they get mentors in the industry that kind of gear them on that? And uh, Austin, I'll start with you. Like, how can someone connect with you to like, if they wanted you to mentor them? Yeah. <laughs> So, um. <laughs> oh, join Zed. <laughs> Shameless plug. I, I mean, uh, so me personally, I, I'm I'm pretty accessible. You know, I, I'm happy to give an email address. Um, I can't promise that I'll have enough bandwidth to mentor every and any person that you know would want me to be a mentor. But you know, I think again, organizations like Zed. Brooke Owens, Patty Gray Smith Fellowship, like organizations that are grassroots, that are doing the work, that are trying to create lanes of opportunities and are really tapping into uh, underrepresented groups and saying, come on, we want you, that are encouraging, that are, that are, are, that are actually going and seeking out uh, the folks within these communities and saying, come on. And I think that's, that, that's important because I think like, you know, some of our institutions don't even really know the first thing about like how to access and tap into these communities. And that's why it's so important to have organizations that are on the ground level that are doing the work that are serving as a bridge. Um, you know, my mom uh, works as a uh, mentorship coordinator for a group in Florida called Take Stock and Children, um, which partners with the local school board to find and pair students uh, with professional mentors. And, and if they follow the program and they meet with their mentor and they keep their grades up, they get a, you know, a, a two-year scholarship to go, uh, you know, straight, straight from high school to college. And I think that's, those are opportunities that are creating bridges for students to have access to greater opportunity, to have access to someone that might look like them or in a professional capacity that they can start to ask, you know, what did you study in college? You know, how did you, you know, how did you prep for the SAT? Like, how did you fill out a, a, an application? And so there are resources in the community. Sometimes it, it, it might take, you know, asking the right question or starting to kind of figure out who can I ask to get me and point it in the right direction. Um, but I absolutely think it's important that from an industry perspective, that we 
promote the heck out of the organizations and the folks that are doing the work. And I think like even with what Zed is doing, with what Pedigree Smith Fellowship is doing, with Brooke Owens Fellowship, with Matthew Sockwitz Fellowship, those are the notable ones within the aerospace industry that are really doing the work. And I'm encouraged by the work that's happening. Um, but the, I, I think we, we owe it to continue to push that forward. Um, and in the folks that are in, in, in positions of influence, we absolutely should uh, we should we should find ways to give back and, and mentorship. Gosh, like mentorship is 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 so important. Like if there's anything that's probably impacted the my career the most, it's having really really good people in my corner that have advocated for me, that have spoke well of me in rooms and spaces that I couldn't even access, um, that have pushed me to do and pursue opportunities that I didn't think I was qualified for, um, and I and I credit um, both a, a really strong you know familial support, but also really strong mentorship that's helped me, and I and I and I think that every student you know deserves a really good mentor or a, at least a community um, to kind of push them yeah as far as is mentorship and and how to tap into that I think the biggest thing it kind of goes with the imposter syndrome is oh well this person's too busy or you know I'm not I'm not good enough to be their mentee and and I always give the best advice that I give is never to allow that to be a reason why you don't tap into a network um I and I had saw a little question uh, uh, regarding like non-black allyship. And honestly, for me, mentorship has no color. It's not, okay, well, I'm only looking for black mentors or I'm only looking for Hispanic mentors. For me, it's, I see somebody that I admire the, what they're doing. I admire something about their personality or their career journey that I want to get to, you know, where they are. And, you know, the saying of dress for the job you want I'm, dress, I'm using the mentor because I want to get to where they're at. Um, I'm trying to dress for the job I want and prepare for that. Um, and so really being, you know, with courage and, you know, pitting, putting your big girl pants on, putting your big boy pants on um, and saying, you know, hey, would you be willing to connect with me? And uh, I mean, you may get some jerks that are, you know, don't respond or are rude or whatever. And, and that's, but that's few and far between. Most people want to be of assistance and want to help. And, and for industry folks out there, uh, for black and non, you know, non-black allies, um, being approachable and really being almost over the top if you're in a student capacity or where you're with students um, and just sharing that you do have an open door policy or you're willing to talk and you're willing to um, encourage and to even if you don't have time to specifically mentor them, even having a virtual coffee or something like that to encourage them and to share your experiences is really important. And for students, just having the courage to, you know, show that you're worth it. You are worth it and you deserve uh, to have those moments and, and you're, you know, you, I, I want to say worthy, I guess is the best, is the best word of it, but you deserve that time. So don't, don't jip yourself um, from those opportunities. I, I want to just add really quickly to that to say that I think that um, students can the, the, are uh, best served when they're proactive and they do some homework on their end. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, if, if you, if you want to be mentored by somebody who's really awesome, something that somebody told me a long time ago was when you want something done and done well, find the busiest person and make them do it because they're the busiest for a reason, right? If they're not busy, you better question what, 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 what these people are up to. So if you're looking for the best, the best are going to be busy. And so you best served yourself by being proactive, uh, not just reaching out, but saying, look, uh, I'll work around your schedule, blah, blah, blah. I want to make this easy for you. Um, I've already looked at the work that you do, the specific stuff that I'd like to talk to you about, if you'd be keen to do that, would be this, that, or the other. It's like, show the person that you've done some work, that you're not just somebody who just like, you know, Google their name, and then you're just waiting to be carried through this process. No, you have to meet these people, meet them. You have to walk towards their direction, and it's not meet in the middle. You go, yeah. so, so, so don't think, I'm going to meet this person in the middle. No you meet them 
wherever it is you actually interact. So if that means that you need to walk a mile or five or 10, as long as you're walking and you know that you're going to meet them wherever that, that is, but do the work to do that. Because in that measure, you will have helped yourself. Thank you, everyone. This is, <laughs> wow, I'm learning stuff. I've been taking notes too. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I guess just to round up because we have questions now and that was a nice way to, to leave it there because I like the inspiring feel of to what to do to uh, make yourself better. Um, I'll just go through, I have three questions here. I have two in the chat. Um, the first one was, uh, how can non-Black allies help elevate Black voices in the aerospace community? Um, without being exploitative or feeding into the, these pre-existing structures of iniquity. So to anyone who uh, wants to answer that, I hope it will be like one or two panelists per question and then we can just go through them. So put, put up, hire, hire these people into a position of decision making. <laughs> That's what you can do. Look, the first, the, whenever somebody tells me that they're all about diversity and inclusivity, the first thing that I do is I look up their board of directors. It's like, okay, so you're diverse, except that you don't actually give diversity a voice. So you're not inclusive. So work on the inclusivity. Give, give somebody of a diverse background a position where they can make decisions and, in, and a position of influence. That's the best way you can serve, in my opinion. I, I think if you are in, in more of a, I agree, I think like, you know, obviously diverse hiring practices are important. I think for maybe folks that aren't in positions of influence to make those decisions, um, I think, you know, advocacy is important as well, um, especially considering, um, you know, I think, I think it's important even, even for, uh, for certain, certain organizations that might not have an inclusive culture, you know, are there ways where you know folks or employees on that staff can advocate for, hey, we don't do this, or hey, I, I realize that this actually is is a is a practice that we do or a policy that we have that isn't very inclusive. Or, or and I, I think sometimes even vocalizing and and bringing attention to uh, ways or or modes of, of 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 thinking or doing that aren't inclusive of other groups um, is a great first step, and it's something that each of us can do. Each of us can kind of take inventory, um, and that and that. And that is something that where if I realize that, hey, I'm operating in a way or a modality of being that isn't inclusive of, of all groups, then that there's some there's some reprogramming needs to happen. Or maybe I need to articulate that in a way where maybe I'm not the person that can change policy, but I can advocate and push against that to maybe affect change. And, and that can be in small and big ways. And so I think um, being authentic is important. I think that, you know, to, to the point about without being exploitative, um, I've definitely, you know, like I feel like every February, like everyone's like, wait a minute, like we got to get somebody black to like talk about like diversity because it's Black History Month. Um, but this, these are things that are, are year round. And so, you know, even, you know, I think it's important for, you know, non-black allies continually like, and for all of us really, and, you know, as a, as a collective community to be thinking, you know, how, how is the space that I'm operating in and I'm working in and I'm collaborating in, is it as inclusive and, and diverse as it needs to be? Or are there things that I can do to promote that or to change that or to influence that? Booyah. <laughs> there. And then I guess uh, the question to all, but I hope one person, uh, it's, uh, what communities were or are most impactful for you and what would you create or what would you change about them to better benefit those communities you care about? That's a... um, well, I mean, not to sound cocky, but I saw what I thought was needed and created something that I felt like was mean, the gap that was that I wanted to meet as far as you know, getting students into the industry and giving those first opportunities. Um, if I could better it, um, I would say that we can only reach so many students and we can only give so many opportunities with a small bandwidth, but my expectation, and I'm, I, I shared this with all my fellows, is that they, it's like a ripple effect. Like, yes, we're, we create, this opportunity we want you know you all to benefit and to learn and to grow from this opportunity but to individually take this opportunity and 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 the 
you know, blessing that it is and shower it <laughs> and sprinkle it all, all around the industry. And so I think it just comes down to, you know, not having just little pockets of, you know, encouragement and opportunity, but using those opportunities to be able to kind of be a ripple effect, if that makes sense. Um, so. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's perfect. And I think the last question we had is just, uh, what are your thoughts about NASA officially renaming their headquarters building today in honor of Mary Jackson, the first female African-American engineer at NASA? It's about time. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's, that's an awesome answer. And uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all the questions we had. Um, I just, <laughs> yeah, I just want to, in summation, thank everyone for being here. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Austin and Christian and Moro for being part of this panel. Uh, thank you all the audience for being here today. It's been really phenomenal just uh, getting um, getting this discussion going. And um, also saying since this is by Red Wire and Zed, I'd like to say that like Red Wire has a lot of uh, awesome opportunities right now available on their website. Uh, I know there's like software engineering positions open, test engineering. Everything. Everything, yeah, comms, engineering, operations, finance, redwirespace.com slash careers. If you need, if you if you need a referral, email me. Hit me in my Twitter t DMs. You know, we we we're definitely looking for really talented uh, folks. So you know, love 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 to talk to y'all. Yeah, and uh, also the Z Factor Fellowship. Uh, we will be having a lot of programming like this that addresses um, lots of underrepresentation that we see in the industry. And we hope to commute, uh, communicate uh, with individuals and uh, professionals that are here to like um, promote equity and diversity in the industry. So uh, I know it's 55, I guess. Uh, how, about, how about one time for Ovi uh, holding it down as the moderator for the panel? Shout out to thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. Great job. Great job. Yeah, thank you all. Um, and that, that's, that's it. It's a bit early. I don't know. Any last regards, Christian, Austin, please? Any, any, I guess what I like to ask since we have time is what would each of you like our, a lot of our people listening will be students. What would you like them to take from the discussion? Like, um, what do you want as a lesson learned at least? What was the last final thing you want before we close out? I'll start with Christian. Nah. Okay. Um, I would say if I could leave with just final thoughts, uh, challenge the status quo. Um, it's not, uh, you're, you're put on this earth to, to make change and to be impactful. Um, so definitely do that. And, and whenever you start to feel that imposter syndrome of, oh, I can't, you know, or I'm not good enough, try really, really hard to actively silence those voices because you, you're so worthy of your opinions and your thoughts and everything that you bring to the table. So definitely um, don't be afraid to use your voice. Um, and whenever you're giving that opportunity to be at the table, make sure you don't forget to take partake in the bread, the butter, and the wine, literally, literally and figuratively, if you're 21 and over. <laughs> hey, Austin? Yeah, my, my takeaway, I'll, I'll echo it again, is that it, there's a room for you. You belong here. You know, with, with whatever whatever talents and abilities that you have, uh, creativity, you, you belong here. You belong in this space. And so keep doing what you're doing. Um, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't let anybody deter you from pursuing the things that you feel like you want to do. You belong. And so that that would be the one takeaway that I want folks to take away from this is you belong. Marva? Yeah, I would say that, um, you know, I, I hold on to the belief that all things are interconnected and I would challenge you to, uh, to test that hypothesis, explore it and, you know, honor and respect, uh, that interconnectedness and that there is a contribution that only you can make one that is unique to you. And it's for you to discover what that contribution is. So, so that's why you can't, just let yourself be told no by folks because only you can make it and that uh action is 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 best 
when born from a place of compassion. Thank you. Thank you very much again, everyone. And uh, for the audience, and it's now closer to the time. I'm really on the dot kind of person, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I would leave you with uh, an awesome quote I heard last weekend uh, from Dr. Mori Baja. It says, um, inclusivity is when diversity has a voice. So I would like you all to ruminate on that and really think about that. Have a lovely day. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Booyah, you. everybody. Yeah. The bread, the butter, and the wine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need, I need, I need, I need, I need to hit up some food or something. I was say, I need about I'm lunch. really hungry now. I didn't have right. lunch. I didn't feel like that. All right, see you. Bye. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you.